What's up, guys? You can see a different background. I'm wearing a tank top, which can only mean one thing. I moved to Dubai. Please excuse the unprofessional attire. I know I'm not in my regular drip, uh, but it's just because it's hot as, like, Satan's ass in Dubai right now. So, yeah, even with the AC on. We're going to dive right into the value today. Basically, I'm going to show you guys how to grow D2C subscription brands. So if you want to build, like, a monthly recurring element into your Shopify brand, please watch this video because there's going to be three really big things that most brands get wrong and if you get it wrong because it's a subscription model you're not necessarily always expected to be profitable on the first transaction you can go bankrupt very easily and very quickly okay you can lose all your investors money or your money down the drain in the matter of months right so let's dive into it today i'm going to show you some really cool calculators uh, but basically, the biggest thing people don't understand about the D2C subscription model is that you just don't understand like churn rates, tracking all of the metrics, working out like how long it takes for you to break even on the initial acquisition cost with cost of goods factored in, right? So I've built this kind of like little calculator, which I'll tell you guys how to get access to later in the video. But long story short, the reason why you need to understand your churn rates, your gross profit on lifetime value, to the T and your timelines for like breaking even and that kind of stuff is because at the core subscription businesses translate to recurring revenue based business models. However, the problem with this is normally when you're trying to build subscription businesses, you're entering a highly competitive space dominated by absolute giants who have this all nailed down right? So therefore, they're able to lose a little bit and scale into the red on the front end because they know the back end maths to the T. Whereas most Shopify brands that I see under, let's say, the 250k mark per month, right? They don't understand cohort analysis. They don't understand lifetime value and they don't understand like the timeline in which it takes for people to realize their time lifetime value. Okay, so we're going to work out all of that for you today on this calculator and I'll show you how to get access to this later on as well so that you're basically not scaling through spray and pray and just acquire a customer and fingers crossed, you know, they're going to be profitable for you. You're going to know by the end of this video. So let's dive into it. So let's get into how to use this calculator and what all of this means, right? So first of all, churn rate. Churn rate is basically the percentage of revenue you lose every month versus the percentage of revenue gained some people do it based on subs some people do it on revenue i prefer to do it based on subs in this case because it was easier to build the calculator off of however if you are selling subscriptions at different price points then you should be calculating churn based on revenue okay but basically unlike SaaS, instead of measuring churn rate based on year in ecom we're measuring things based on month so how we do it is we take your average order value or your average subscription value like per transaction, right? So let's say in the case of Tij and Hanley, they're a skincare system basically for men. Let's take their average order value to be, you know, they have uh, $33, okay, $44.55. So I'm guessing it's going to be somewhere around the $40 range as the average order value, right? Because most people are going to go for the basic set. And what I want you to do is once you plug in your average order value, then work out how many subscriptions you lost in the last 90 days. The reason why we don't do last 30 is because, you know, right now, for example, it's August. Generally speaking, it's quite a slow month across the board for a lot of, you know, e-com brands. So we want to get a good average. So we do last 90 days and we divide that number by three. So basically, let's say you lost uh, 200 subs in the last 90 days and then your current number of subscribers is 250, something like that, right? Once you plug this number in, it's automatically going to factor in the division by three here, by the way, and it's going to work out a churn rate for you. Now, what this really means is, let's say, you know, you, your current subs is 250, right? Um, that means you're doing about $10,000 in recurring revenue every single month, right? At a 20%, 21.05% churn rate, you're going to need to add 52.6 subscribers every single month in order for you to maintain your 10K MLR, okay? So all of this stuff is kind of worked out for you, like all everything on the green side of things. And this is like, all of the metrics you basically need to know, right? So if you currently have 250 subs, you lost 200 in the past, let's just make this 2100 for like 
uh, safe, easy division. Let's say you you lost 210 subs in the last 90 days. That means you, on average, lost 70 per month. You have a 21.88% churn rate, and your lifetime value, on average, is going to be $182, right? And that lifetime value, on average, is going to be realized across 4.2 five, seven months. So that means the average subscriber that you get based on these churn metrics and these average order value metrics is four point four and a half months, let's say, right? 4.57 months, almost 4.6 months. So just over four and a half months. Now, what I want you to do next is look at your CAC, cost per acquisition, or like um, cost to acquire a customer or something, right? Basically, just look at all your ads across the board and just divide like all of your marketing spend basically by the number of new customers you acquire on a monthly basis. And you should get a decent idea of your CAC. Again, let's project it for the case of Tijan Hanley. For this industry, I would say like the CAC is anywhere from like 55 bucks to 80 bucks. But, you know, they're largely driven by influencer marketing and YouTube and that kind of stuff. So I don't know, maybe their CAC is like uh, $40, $45, let's say, right? And their cost of goods sold on the $33 package, I cannot imagine it being more than $12 just because it seems like a profit maximizing type of brand, okay? So for them, let's say if their CAC is 45 bucks, which, you know, let's just hold numbers, let's round it up to 50 to be more conservative. And let's round this up to 15 because if it's $12, then that means their skincare is probably not the highest quality, right? So 15 bucks in cost of goods sold. So that means a time to break even for them on this cost per acquisition and on the according to these cogs is they need people to stay on average for two months, right? So that means if the average person is staying for 4.6 months right now, as is, every single new customer they acquire on average on lifetime value, which is going to take four and a half months to realize, is $64. That's going to be their gross profit. Okay. Minus all marketing spend, minus cogs, all of that stuff. Right. So that's not a, like, that's not a terrible margin. And of course, if you think about like these really big consumer brands, like Starbucks, McDonald's, all of this stuff, like for example, Starbucks, the average lifetime value for a customer is like eight grand. Right. So you can imagine like their cost of goods sold for a coffee is jack shit. Right. So the amount of money spent per customer over such a long period of time, they can spend very aggressively on their marketing, right? So what you really want to do is maximize this number as high, like get this number to be as high as possible. And you do that by reducing churn rates. So watch what I do here, right? Let's say I drop churn to a hundred, like we lose a hundred uh, subscribers in the last 90 days, so around 30 per, per month right? Churn rate drops to 10%. The average lifetime goes to eight and a half months, right? And the gross profit per customer now all of a sudden jumps from like $64 all the way to 162. So you can see by dropping your churn, that's going to be the thing that allows you to really, really scale from a subscription standpoint. Because the thing with CAC is like buying customers at scale always costs roughly the same. So for example, if I wanted to run ads and acquire clients for my agency, I don't currently, but generally speaking, it's going to cost me anywhere from $2,000 to $4,000. Okay. And it's very difficult to get it down to, let's say, 500 versus if I just provide a really good service, which I do, by the way. So if you're a seven figure e-com brand and you want to work with us for your email and SMS marketing, because, you know, if you're a subscription brand, like post purchase is really fucking important. OK, book in a call. First link in the description. We're really good at what we do. Anyways, back to it. If I just spent really aggressively on my agency ads, let's say, and acquired a shit ton of clients, right? Yes, I would make more money. However, I'm going to be burning my name in the space and all of this stuff so that over time my cost per acquisition goes up. Whereas if I just extend, like get clients to stay with me because we have a banging service from let's say 10 months to 14 months, man, like <laughs> I just make my life so much easier, right? And it's the same thing with subscription model D2C brands and any business out there, right? It's always easier to just get people to spend more money with you that are already on your product by either iterating on the product iterating on the customer experience and that's basically it you know like deliver a good product and a good customer experience 
you also can build in stickiness to your product. So what do I mean by this, right? One of my favorite supplement brands out there right now, I've been a customer of theirs for a long time. I wish they shipped to Dubai, actually. I had to cancel my subscription. But basically, their whole marketing is absolutely genius. So what happens is, they try to put everyone on a quarterly subscription like I was, right? Because you get a better deal. But how they increase their conversion rate to the three months plan is very, very interesting. So their whole thing is they're trying to lay out like a benefits timeline, okay? So the genius behind it is like they always emphasize the benefits that happen, let's say, after the first six months, after the first even nine months, right? Like they're trying to build a benefits roadmap where let's say, yeah, you take us for 30 days, you're gonna feel these things, right? But then if you take us for a year onwards, you're gonna feel better focus, better work output, just like crazy benefits, right? But the truth is, if I were to tell you to benchmark how you felt a year ago from now, if you're an individual that's like working hard every day and trying to improve your life, you're probably gonna say better, right? So actually they build in very, a lot of stickiness to the product because they're trying to get you to essentially unlock the next tier of benefits, even though it's very hard to benchmark because you have no idea how you felt 12 months ago. Yeah, you could do blood work and all of this stuff, but I would guess like most of their customers don't do that, right? So one lesson for them that you can learn and apply to your brand would be to build in a lot of stickiness to your product by making it so that people understand that the longer they stay, the more benefits they have. And therefore you can introduce things like quarterly subscriptions instead of a monthly billing cycle, right? Because what happens is, and it's a very, very big difference by the way, you up your cash collected up front. So rather than the average order value being, let's say uh, $40, right? You triple it and it goes straight to 120, right? And what happens here is because you only needed people to stay for two months, in order to actually grow, you've 3x your cash collected. So therefore the spare cash on this customer can be used to fuel acquisition for the next customer, which kind of brings me into the next problem that a lot of subscription models, and it's that people are being forced to scale into the red. So what do I mean by scaling into the red? So scaling into the red is a term that I believe originates from like software where it's like you would spend a thousand dollars to acquire a customer, but it would take 12 months for that customer to be like cash flow positive and above break even for you. And the idea is that customer will stay for long enough for you to make a profit on the original investment to acquire that customer. Now, this is very common. I'm pretty sure brands like AG1 and all of the top really like supplement skincare, any of the consumable brands that is heavily reliant on lifetime value, even like Lumen Skin, for example, I'm pretty sure they're all scaling into the red because they are venture backed or they have private equity behind them. They basically just have a shit ton of funding, right? So they can afford this. However, for the average brand, and I'm guessing if, you, if you're watching a video from me and learning all of the basic stuff from me, rather than like, I don't know, your, your investors or whatever, you probably don't have very deep pockets, right? So you want to try to avoid scaling into the red as much as humanly fucking possible, okay? So that's why I would recommend you build in some sort of stickiness to the product, as well as try to maximize your cash collected up front. So for example, every customer that walks in the door, right? They buy a skincare bundle from you and they are on subscription, you build them every 30 days. One way of just having more cash collected and raising it by 8% is instead of selling 30 day subscriptions, you sell 28 day subscriptions, right? What happens is over a period of year, instead of having 12 billing cycles, you have 13 billing cycles because of those two extra days. The thing is, this does not affect conversion because why people do not know the difference between a month and four weeks. Okay, so small things like that is gonna help with cash flow a ton because let's imagine you're doing, I don't know, a million a year in revenue or 8% is $80,000 for free. Okay, so I don't know why more brands are not doing this. Instead of selling 30 days, change it to 28 days and try to do as many quarterly bundles, like try to maximize cash collected up front because that's going to help you solve your cash flow problems. And also it's going to help ease the fact that you, you need to scale into the red. You don't, not all the time, because 
if you have cash collected up front that is above break even for you right what's gonna happen is you can use that spare cash to fuel the acquisition of the next customer and that's how you can scale businesses exponentially because what happens is you know you you buy let's say two customers from the market right and those two customers can fund the next two customers because they're both on bigger bundles and then so on and so forth and there you get growth right if you don't do that and if you need to wait let's say two months before you can afford to acquire the next customer you're going to stagger your growth immensely so yeah avoid scaling into the red at all cost and I showed you a couple hacks, but basically the principles of behind those hacks are just raising this number, average order value, reducing a churn rate, obviously, but that doesn't necessarily help with cash flow as much. So it's all about raising your average order value and shortening the time in between purchases, right? So let's say you can get someone to spend $100 instead of $40 on the front end. Amazing, your cash flow positive, right? Or if you shorten the billing cycles to let's say from 30 days to 28 days the principles is either you charge them more upfront or you charge them more frequently boom there you go that's how you get profitable and in terms of shortening the windows of repeat purchase there's kind of like a few ways you can do it you can include like packaging upsells with something like slippy.io they're a partner of mine really great basically they do like personalized printed out slips and they put it in the packaging of the product works incredibly well because the QR codes are all tracked so you can track attribution and all of this stuff you can have a better post-purchase onboarding experience through email marketing you can run retargeting ads yo this is like one of the things I don't understand why people are not doing more of like once someone purchases from you if you look into your Shopify dashboard if you go on your Shopify analytics dashboard you can look into customer cohort analysis and it's going to show you a graph similar to this one where it's like the more blue areas are where people are repurchasing etc etc right so you want to know like what is the time frames in which people are repurchasing look at those customers analyze their behaviors what messages have they received from you guys in terms of like everything but basically you can see like the first month like as soon as they purchase a lot of the time you're going to find that in your brand people are repurchasing again within the same month of them ordering at anywhere from four to ten percent wow right so that means if you just ran some retargeting ads you could probably increase that number quite a bit so rather than excluding last 180 day purchases from let's say your facebook and instagram ads just run it as a separate retargeting audience or just include it in your retargeting audiences and make some separate ad creatives for them right so what does that look like the ad creative would be stuff like hey we're so glad that you're trying our product did you know you can mix this powder in this recipe and it's going to taste super sick right like giving them ideas on how to use it giving them instructions and then at the end of these video ads are informational about their new purchase you can then just add them with a quick upset it's like oh by the way like if you want to make this taste better you would add some of this and then you just upsell a complimentary product right or upsell them onto a bundle it doesn't really matter at the end of the day because people are more likely to buy right because they've already committed to the product so i'll leave the screenshot here just so you know like what to look for in your dashboard but yeah retargeting ads and also building retention mechanisms like high in terms of you know having quarterly plans yearly plans whatever whatever road mapping like the next 12 months with you guys it's called um i think it's like foreshadowing or whatever but basically you want to make it so that they're committing to a longer term relationship with your brand right because they understand that at the end of the 12 months let's say there's another pot of gold to be had so yeah which kind of brings me into the last problem that subscription d2c brands face which is kind of having a lack of capital so that you're unable to compete in certain markets like for example if you're trying to compete with like an ag1 fucking good luck if you <laughs> if you're trying to bootstrap it right but basically if you want to actually raise capital to grow your subscription brand by just knowing all of this makes your deal instantly more attractive to vcs private equity and generally investors right because this is the unit economics behind the whole business and if you can't prove this as a viable model you're basically fucked so yeah i hope you found this video useful and if you want to get access to this sheet 
all you got to do is join the school group that I have where I'm going to add all of the resources, all of the SOPs that I've announced in the past like all of the lead magnets and the super helpful stuff basically i'm gonna add also new resources and more premium content i guess that doesn't rank well on youtube so i can't i don't really post about it but you know there's gonna be a lot of d2c source on there and it only costs a one-time unlock fee so check that out and if you're a seven-figure brand you should really book in a call with us because um we'll sort you out on email and sms marketing and we're super super fucking good at it so yeah Peace out. I'll see you in the next one.